Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops, real crooks, real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress. From impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. officers see things out there that the average citizen can only imagine. These officers send us their tapes so we can show you what they do on a daily basis. So hang on, because you're going to see what it's really like. In Los Angeles, police are used to chasing stolen vehicles, but they've never seen anything like this. Units in pursuit of a 7-up delivery truck. The suspect behind the wheel has a history of crime, but this is his biggest heist ever. He almost sideswiped that red blazer there. A vehicle this size would flatten any roadblock. And spike strips are too dangerous in traffic. OK, now he's in the fast lane. So all officers can do is follow the suspect and pray he stops before someone gets hurt. He's running up right back in that school bus. OK, he's going into the breakdown lane. Racing in a lane barely wide enough for a compact car, the suspect comes within inches of crashing. OK, he's getting off. All right, he's getting off the Van Nuys. The suspect abandons the freeway, putting more pressure on the police. Oh, he came out on the wrong side of the road. Officers now have to worry about pedestrians, midday traffic. He almost rear-ended that black coupe. And red lights. Traffic is stopped, but uh, there he goes. He's on the sidewalk. The back of his truck is open, and he's losing soda all over the place. The rough riot rattles the bottles and cans. And every time the suspect takes a hard turn or bump, Soft drinks hit hard concrete. Flying cans are like missiles to unaware bystanders. The truck continues to blow through intersections. That was a red light. As ground units rush to stop traffic at major cross streets. And it's just sheer luck that nobody's been hurt so far. But everybody's luck is about to run out. Oh, he's going through. Oh, oh, God. There's, there's been a collision. The brown car can't stop in time. It's a metal-wrenching crash. But the accident doesn't slow down the suspect. He keeps risking lives with every turn. Oh, and he just missed the pedestrian at the crosswalk. That's when police decide to back off. The idea is to make the driver feel like he's not being chased. The truck is stopping. The truck is stopping, and he's running. The suspect's on foot. He wildly rushes through a crowd of frightened kids and into a building. Meanwhile, the abandoned truck was left in gear and has crashed into a gate across from an elementary school. Police are there in seconds, establishing a perimeter. There are several units on scene right now. The officers learn the man lives in the building. They search the place, but he's not inside. Two officers spot movement in a tree. It's the suspect, hiding in the leaves like a trapped animal. Surrounded by armed officers, the man falls. Police are on him in a heartbeat and they lead him away in cuffs. He'll await trial, innocent until proven guilty. This truck-taking, soda-spilling, car-crushing menace led officers on a two-hour chase. But just when he thought he was home free... The suspect is on foot. His chances of freedom came tumbling down. Speed is a drug. People use it to shave minutes off their travel time. When they abuse it, they can shave years off their lives. That's why we have speed limits. 
but no matter how much we enforce them, people still drive too fast. This semi-truck is speedy when it encounters a radar trap. The driver jams the brakes and the big brick jackknives. Most of the cars skid to a halt, but a speedy minivan plows into the trailer. The minivan driver is alive, but shaken. Speeding turned her vehicle and the truck into wrecks. If people drive this way with posted speed limits, what's it like on a road without them? Germany's Autobahn. Notorious as a speed zone without limits. A two-picture highway camera films a Mercedes rounding a bend at 120 miles per hour. But it can't take the speed. The car smashes into a guardrail. Flipping onto its back, it ricochets off another rail and keeps on going. The momentum carries it over 100 yards on its roof. Finally, it slides into a ditch and flips back over. The roof is ripped off and flung aside like tinfoil. The driver staggers out of the wreckage and up the embankment, where he sits in a daze and replays the terrifying ride in his mind. Did he really have to go that fast? Speeding may save you time, but the faster you go, the less time you have to react. And in those few seconds, you just might lose everything. Los Angeles, California. The man in this pickup is armed with a gun, a spear gun. Moments ago, he stole it from a store at the beach. Police shot him after he tried to run down an officer. Now he's wounded, armed with a spear gun, and he's on the freeway. When he used that vehicle that you're seeing as, as a weapon against the police officers, that's why they felt fear of their lives and opened fire. Police follow at a careful distance. The slightest sign of aggression might trigger another violent outburst. That's the tire or the engine, but I, I believe it's the engine. Starved for oil, the laboring engine quits, and the smoking truck rolls to a stop. Police form a barricade behind the truck. They can't see the man clearly. He might have the spear gun ready to fire. Copy, stand by, still 417. The standoff lasts more than an hour. The, the door is open. He seems to be cautiously, slowly. Here he comes. Here he comes. But in the end, he gives up peacefully. All units, stand down, 1098. The officers restrain him and send him to a hospital for observation. When people with mental problems break the law, they need special considerations. They're not your typical criminal, but they can still be very dangerous. Florence, Oregon, 4 AM. A lone patrolman is startled to find a woman driving on the shoulder of the wrong side of the road. This may be a stolen car. The typical Volvo owner doesn't force other drivers off the road. Some almost don't make it. She must be stopped before someone is injured or killed. The officer calls for assistance, and an ambulance is the first to arrive. The ambulance driver knows what the cop needs, a rolling roadblock. But the desperate driver manages to fake a left, then slip past on the right. The woman heads toward a more populated area. She must be stopped before she encounters city traffic. The officer pulls alongside, matches her speed, and jams her into the guardrail. The ambulance pulls in ahead in case she tries to run. The paramedics find the woman raving with paranoid delusions. <laughs> Irvine, California. Police respond to reports of a disturbed man driving in circles at a junior high school parking lot. Police lay out spike strips, barricade the lot, and wait. The spike strips shred the tires instantly. But the man continues to drive in circles, pasting pornographic pictures on the windows. The man slows down long enough to make a simple request. They coax him out of the truck with a glass of water. And grab him quickly before he can get back inside. The man seems relieved when it's all over. Okay, listen, we're gonna get you the water and get you back to our station. Okay. 
Each of these suspects was mentally disturbed. Fortunately, the police were able to stop them and a judge gave them what they needed. Medical evaluation and psychiatric care. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, a Georgia trooper Get on the ground. faces a back road battle. California crooks are going well over 100 miles an hour. Plan a daring escape. Really flying through this traffic. And cops in Texas get locked in a high-speed showdown. This guy is driving like a blooming idiot. Point-blank decisions, mind-blowing moments, pedal-pounding action. Next. They plan to pull the perfect heist. They plan to steal the perfect car. They're going well over 100 miles an hour. They plan to make the perfect getaway. They are really flying through this traffic. But they never thought this perfect plan Get out of the car. might just be their last. Hands on the car! Hands on the car! Threat of prison can make people desperate and dangerous. When a cop tries to bust an ex-con, he can expect trouble. Whitfield County, Georgia. On a quiet country road, a deputy sheriff stops a suspected drunk driver. How long have you been here? Not long. Uh, hmm. Two months. I've got to get my license, my tag registered back, take a straight. The driver gives the officer a string of excuses. Well, I live in the right house here, but that's my mailing address. How many probation your license? Not only is the suspect driving with a restricted license, he fails the sobriety test. When the deputy tries to arrest him, he refuses to cooperate. Put your hands on the car. Don't wait. Put your hands on the car. Have me another game, man. The suspect manages to get behind the wheel. The deputy knows he has to keep this dangerous driver off the road. Then the suspect reveals the reason he's fighting so hard. I can't go back to jail. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to jail. This man will do anything to keep his freedom. He fears the nightmare that waits for him behind prison walls. The deputy knows that if a suspect fights this viciously with a cop, he's a danger to anyone and everyone. The deputy could use lethal force at any time, but he intends to take this man alive. His determination pays off as he gets the suspect under control and keeps him there until backup arrives. The man complains of suffocation. I can't run. I can't run. The deputy doesn't buy it. If this man can talk, he can also breathe. When backup arrives, the exhausted officer rolls over in relief. It takes two strong officers to cuff the suspect. This man could have cooperated with the deputy. He might have only received a suspension for the DUI, but he chose to fight. Now he's going back to the one place he hates most, prison. And he'll be there for a long time for aggravated assault on a police officer. When crooks plan a robbery, they think they have everything all figured out. Move in fast and ruthless. Resist and you die. Know right where the money is sitting. Dump the guns and masks outside. And they're gone in 30 seconds. Los Angeles, California. The men in this stolen car have just robbed a Kmart. They think they have a plan. But a news helicopter has just spotted their stolen getaway car. They're going well over 100 miles an hour, really flying through this traffic. By the time the police receive a description of the car and get on the freeway, they have some serious catching up to do. OK, dispatch, we're in pursuit. We're in pursuit, be advised. We're in pursuit. Hey, copy? I copy, unit is in pursuit. These guys are suspected of having pulled off a very efficient armed robbery of a Kmart store in Bakersfield. Officers push their cruisers to the limit, only to find themselves slowed down by rush hour traffic. Suspects are now coming up to a very busy Wilshire Boulevard, still going very fast. The crooks even planned a backup escape. The police are still coming, but they are still way behind. Their plan is to get to Wilshire Boulevard, ditch the stolen car, and lose the cops on foot. Wait a minute. But in all that planning, they forgot one thing. It looks like they're slowing down. They forgot that when you steal a car, 
you have to steal a car with enough gas to get away. It looks like they're out of gas. Can you believe it? This car is actually rolling to a stop. Cruisers rapidly form a perimeter around the car. These cops don't take any chances with potentially armed felons. Driver, get out of the car. Police are now, they're conducting what they call a felony car stop. They're taking these guys out one at a time. The cops aren't in a hurry now. They have their bad guys. And now they have their evidence. Money, all from Kmart. Each suspect caught red-handed with hundreds of dollars stuffed into his pockets, ready to bail and run for it. So what does all that criminal planning, a violent robbery, fast driving, and a so-called great escape route get you? 15 years in prison. Chambers County, Texas. A county deputy stops a driver for going five miles an hour over the limit. How you doing, sir? How you doing? I'm Officer Atkins of Chambers County. It's no big deal. Officer Atkins only intends to issue a warning but the driver acts nervous and his answers are evasive. Do you have a problem with me searching the car real quick? No, well, this is my brother's car, so but Well, but you're, you're in care custody and control of the car. The suspects obviously have something to hide. <laughs> Suddenly, they attack the officer, and they run. Atkins is after them in moments. Nobody assaults a Chambers County deputy and just drives away. In pursuit he's battered a 27 vehicle. Subject, sir, uh, throw me the ground. I'm okay. I need some help out here. He watches in amazement as they speed recklessly past unsuspecting drivers. 904 Chambers, be in excess of 120. This guy is driving like a blooming idiot. He's trying to run people off the road. Amazingly, the driver goes even faster. Officer Atkins pushes his cruiser past 130 miles an hour. 904 Chambers, approach in 828. Knowing there's no way to sustain a chase at these speeds, he orders a roadblock to shut these runners down. The sight of a hundred flashing lights does the trick. Okay, they're stopping. We're going to be stopped at Walden Road. Surrounded, they have no choice but to surrender. One of the suspects, so cocky a few moments ago, is now blubbering like a baby. <laughs> Deputy Atkins has no sympathy for him. The suspects were charged with felony endangerment and assaulting an officer. Try to run in Chambers County, and Chambers County will shut you down. Next, on World's Wildest Police Videos. Put your hands on the car. A low-life punk <laughs> meets a real-life hero. Pizza man's gonna get a commendation. A light-fingered crook is running. meets some hard-hitting cops. Stop him. And death-defying collisions yield life-saving lessons. The bullheaded. I'm stupid. The boneheaded. Shoot me! Shoot me! The just plain hard-headed. Next. They think they can fight. Put your hands on the car. They think they can steal. That's it. There he goes. They even think they can run. Put your hands up in But maybe it's time to think again. In Sherwood, Arkansas, a DWI stop gets off on the wrong foot. This officer watches as the driver swaps places with the passenger. How dumb do they think he is? Mom, if I see your driver's license since she was driving? It becomes clear why he switched seats. I have a driver's license, sir. You don't have a driver's license? No, sir. This guy reeks of booze, has no license, and has already tried to fool the officer once. Now he's not following directions. I mean, wait right here one second. Hang on, wait right here one second. Yeah, don't, don't light that up yet. Put that back in your pocket, OK? What I want you to do, I'm going to, no, don't light that up. Put that back in your pocket right now. We can't do that just yet. The officer asks a simple question. If he hadn't been drinking, how come you didn't let him drive in the first place instead of you driving? Because I'm ignorant. I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant. I'm stupid. At least he's finally being honest. 
but the officer has to concentrate on another factor. There's still another suspect in the truck. Stay in the car. Acting on instinct, the cop's hand goes to his weapon, just in case. Close your door. One officer versus two suspects. Those are bad odds, and this cop knows it. But when he tries to even things up by handcuffing the man, this suspect goes from difficult to dangerous. Put your hands on the car. Put your hands on the car. The officer keeps looking over his shoulder. He doesn't want any surprises from the other guy. I'm trying Put your hands behind your back. While the cop tries to watch both men, the suspect seizes the moment and sprints away. This DWI is now a felony flight on foot. The officer needs uniform backup. I need backup. He gets it, but not from the uniform he expects. It's a pizza delivery car, charging in like the cavalry. The pizza man notices the foot chase from down the block. He decides to help by bringing the pursuit to a screeching halt. Years of delivering pizzas have taught him how to drive like this. Now, the officer is able to apprehend the suspect easily, thanks to this local hero. The brave Samaritan is back in his car within moments. Crime fighting aside, he still has to deliver those pizzas in 30 minutes or less. As the pizza man speeds away, the officer doesn't even get a chance to thank him. Backup units arrive seconds later, and both guys are taken to jail. Right in the car, brother. This drunk punk thought he could evade the long arm of the law. Instead, the hot suspect was delivered right back to the waiting police by one heroic pizza man. The little you. pizza man's gonna get a commendation. Burlington, North Carolina, a local department store. He looks like your average teenage shopper, but he has no intention of paying for anything. Fortunately, surveillance cameras cover his every move. His first strike, a watch. Not a top drawer watch, but one that's on sale. Unlike most shoplifters, he steals discount. Confident he can steal anything now, he heads to the clothing department. Grabbing three pair of pants, he casually strolls to the dressing room. He returns with only one, but now his legs look strangely bulky. This lollipop sucking lawbreaker does his best to look nonchalant. He even folds the rejected pants with extreme care. If he weren't a shoplifter, he'd be the ideal customer. Satisfied with his haul, the petty thief decides to call it a day. He scopes for security, but he couldn't look more guilty if he wore a sign around his neck. He knows once he walks through those doors, he's breaking the law. He still has a chance to turn back. Suddenly, a guard sprints toward him. He speeds off through the front doors. Now it's a felony. Outside, he outruns the guard, and it looks like he's home free. But this kid's in for a surprise, a waiting cruiser. He's in the parking lot. He's going fast. The officer bolts after him. He's heading northbound down the lot. Northbound, northbound. But this crook is slowing down. After all, he's wearing three pairs of pants. A squad car barrels up. The officer tackles him to the ground. Incredibly, the thief wrestles free. He's off again. Shedding his first layer of clothing, he forges ahead. But the officer stays on his every move. A speeding truck slams on its brakes, nearly running them both down. Cutting around some trees, he loses ground. The officer accelerates and finally knocks him down. And this time, he's down for the count. Instead of getting two pairs of pants and a watch, all this shoplifter ends up with is a pair of chrome-plated bracelets that won't come off. 40,000 Americans die as a result of traffic accidents. But there would be at least twice as many fatalities if it weren't for one critical thing, crash testing. Every year, thousands of vehicles are sacrificed for one reason, to make car accidents safer for accident victims. Every new vehicle on the market is tested by government agencies, car companies, and universities. They crash cars, 
off-road SUVs, 18 wheelers, family vans, bicycles. And even the cars that eventually become police cruisers. They test them head on and side on. They even do fender benders. All this testing results in better designed seat belts, faster deploying airbags, safer body structures, and stronger doors. Which means cars are safer for you, your friends, and your family, and the men and women of law enforcement. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. Oh, come here. Oh, come here. How do cops catch a desperate smuggler? Get out of the car! What does it take to stop a cold-blooded killer? And just what in the world is this man thinking? The questions are hard. He, he didn't care. He was not scared. The answers are tough. Stay down! The video is wild. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. A kamikaze drunk runs into trouble. A drug-pushing Texan runs from justice. Now, give me some help. And a ruthless cop killer I shot them both. I know I'll fry for the cops. Runs out of time. A cop will use whatever he's got. Can be experience can be intuition, anything in his bag of tricks to help him determine whether a suspect's gonna be a threat. Chambers, Texas. Late at night, an officer pulls over a vehicle for a minor infraction. How you doing, sir? This highway is a popular route for drug smugglers. As a result, cops keep an eye out for drivers who might be hiding something. One of my duties out here is recovery of stolen property and illegal contraband on the highways in the state of Texas. Over the years, this officer has developed a unique method for sniffing out liars. Any guns, knives, hand grenades, tanks, dead bodies, legal agriculture products? No. Do you have a problem with me searching the vehicle? No, sir. I have your permission. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have anything illegal on you? No. Could I pat you down? Yes. Clearly, this cop thinks the man is hiding something. But what tipped him off? Watch it again and listen closely. Any guns, knives, hand grenades, tanks, dead bodies, legal agriculture products? Tanks? Dead bodies? It's obviously a joke. Most people, people with a clear conscience, laugh at it. This guy doesn't even crack a smile. So the officer decides to search him and his car. You stand right here for me, please, sir, and don't move, OK? The cop begins his search. When he starts looking under the seats, the suspect gets nervous. Sir, this is not necessary. But the officer has already found something. You know, the subject's got some marijuana underneath the back seat. His hunch was right on. Now it's time to take the suspect into custody. For my safety right now, I'm going to place you in the back of the car. Suddenly, the man stops cooperating. Now, Thor, give me some help. The officer calls for backup as he wrestles with the drug smuggler. But the situation takes a nightmarish twist. The suspect is able to wrench the gun away from the cop and sprint for the driver's seat. As the man tries to start the car, the officer draws his backup pistol. Aiming at the right rear tire, he fires four rounds. Carefully, he approaches the driver's side. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! He pumps three slugs into the front left wheel and then jumps in his car to give chase. I'm in six, that's fire. Around the bend, the officer finds the suspect spun out and facing the wrong way. Get out of the car! The man won't let anything stop him. Not a cop, not even two flat tires. Chambers, I need some help. But the nearest unit is miles away. This officer is on his own and has lost his primary weapon. Thankfully, he was smart enough to do something they don't teach at the academy. He has my pistol. There are no grounds in it. I was able to eject the magazine when it slipped out of my hand. But I got my backup. Meanwhile, the suspect's car is totally out of control. He's having problems driving. The tractionless car spins like a top. He's about to determine he's going to keep going. He's spun out and spun around several times. The suspect wants to speed away into the night, but his getaway vehicle is not up to the task. He's got at least one, I think, two tires that are flat. The smuggler gets off the highway, but he can't keep the car moving in a straight line. Be advised, he cannot maneuver the car very well. There is still some fight left in this suspect, 
So the officer makes the smart move. Chambers, I'm not going to try to get back out on it until I get some help out here. Moments later, the car dies and rolls off the road. Backup arrives, and the pursuit is finished. This smuggler will spend 20 years in jail, 10 for the drugs, and 10 for assaulting an officer, all because he didn't get a joke. Any guns, knives, hand grenades, tanks, dead bodies, look at culture products? Baytown, Texas, Saturday night. The officers who work the drunk tank in this small town see too many familiar faces. Come on down here, over to MC. Right there. MC. All right. But on this Saturday night, one of the regulars has a surprise for him. He's taught himself how to run headlong into a gun locker. Homer needs to be restrained. He might hurt himself or the gun locker. The Baytown cops waste no time in getting him under control. He's got a hard head, all right. Too bad Baytown doesn't have a padded cell. Instead, he'll sleep it off with the rest of the drunks. The Baytown cops had no idea what Homer had on his mind. But they know what he'll have tomorrow. I can do that again. The granddaddy of all hangovers. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. A suicidal crook on the run of his life. A vicious killer on a psychotic rampage. Possibly is involved in shooting three officers. A high-speed drunk on a path of destruction. It's a race against the clock. He's running back this way now. With men who won't do time. I don't want to go to prison. Next. I panicked, I flipped out. All this was an accident. Madness strikes without warning. We're running back this way now. In the blink of an eye, a turn of the wheel, or the flash of a gun, lives are shattered. Even the best cops may not know when they're in the presence of a person who kills without remorse. Too often, a cold-blooded killer is revealed only after lives have been taken. Tampa Bay, Florida. A mother cries. Her child has been killed, beginning one of the worst nightmares in the history of Florida law enforcement. Officers apprehend a man leaving the scene. He identifies himself as the dead boy's father. He's the only suspect in the death of the innocent child. This is where most cases end. But for everyone involved, this is just the beginning. The distraught father's name comes back clean. He swears his son's death was an accident. Police aren't sure what to believe. So we're trying to figure out, you know, what's, what's going on with the father, if this is an accidental shooting. Two seasoned detectives bring the suspect back to the scene of the shooting. The man tries to explain how this awful mistake happened. I guess the buttstock hit the side of the wall and it went off. Meanwhile, the crime scene technicians find three assault rifles, including the one that fired the deadly round. The cops lead the handcuffed father back to the car. They carry the possible murder weapon. Before they go, the detectives show the rifle to a uniformed corporal. It's the last time anyone will ever see these two officers alive. What no one knows is that the man is actually Hank Earl Carr. He's not the dead boy's father. He's the stepfather. He's also a violent ex-con who is accustomed to clashes with the law. So accustomed, he carries a hidden handcuff key with him at all times. Only minutes after this tape is shot, Hank Carr uses that key to escape from his cuffs. He then steals one of the officer's guns and kills them both in cold blood. Armed and on the run, 
The man then shoots and kills a rookie state trooper. News of the massacre spreads quickly. The corporal's hand signals tell the whole painful story. Three officers dead. Shot. Three. The officers have to choke back their grief and find the man who killed their comrades. On the highway, police speak to an eyewitness. They learn Carr was shot and injured during his flight from the law. Bleeding and desperate, Carr is pulled into a gas station, taking a female clerk hostage. He is now trapped in this shell station. The police response is massive. They are taking no chances with this rampaging killer. Just does and does the police cars for this individual that possibly is involved in shooting three officers. Despite their emotion, the police play this by the book. But inside, the gunman does the unexpected. I didn't know what to do. I was scared. I panicked. I flipped out. He calls a talk radio station. They started calling me a liar, this and that. With hundreds of officers poised for a siege and a scared clerk cowering at gunpoint, Hank Carr decides he wants to talk. I felt his pulse again. It was gone. I knew at that time my son was dead. All this was an accident. It's a startling look inside this killer's mind. He tries to justify his actions, painting himself as a victim but his callousness shows through. I got one of the handcuffs off. I reached up front and uh, got the pistol away from the officer that was driving. I shot them both. I know I'll fry for the cops. I don't want to cry in the electric chair. I don't want to go to prison. I don't want to have to eat the food. I don't want to have to live with people. There is no remorse for the dead policeman, only concern for himself. I don't want to go to prison. I don't want to go. The radio host tries to be the voice of reason. You know, I, the best advice I can give you would be to let that, that lady who has nothing to do with any of this out of that store. Amazingly, his words get through. Dear, okay, I'll walk across into the media. Just before sundown, the emotionally shattered woman is released. Police rush to her aid. Surrounded by SWAT officers, she's escorted to safety. He's running back this way now. The hostage is safe. Quickly, the tactical team puts on gas masks and prepares to go in. They're in position. The signal is given. Literally, I could feel the vibration of my chest. Two concussion grenades strip through the rear of the store. The blast is designed to distract the gunman. The shockwave can be felt by everyone. In the chaos and smoke, the precision SWAT team storms the gas station. You can see the SWAT teams have ran inside. The officers are prepared for a brutal shootout with a confirmed killer. Instead, they find Hank Carr, dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Rather than face the consequences of taking four innocent lives, Carr took his own life. This deadly day finally comes to a close. But there are no happy endings to this story. There is only grief for the family and friends of the slain officers who died so cruelly. Only pain and regret for the mother and birth father of a child whose life ended too suddenly and too soon. And for officers, there is nothing they can do but mourn their fallen brothers, each of them knowing it could have been them. But police will never back down from the Hank cars of the world. They've taken an oath. They have a job to do and a duty to fulfill. Kennedale, Texas. A drunk driver is on the run from the police. Suspect is swerving. Although the man keeps his speed down, the officers know he's still a threat. Cadillac is approaching freeway on ramp to the 14th. They're about to be proven right. The driver hesitates at a red light, then charges through to the on-ramp. With his powerful vehicle, he's beginning to feel invincible. Once on the freeway, the suspect bolts ahead, veering left. What happens next is unbelievable. At this speed, once the caddy begins to swerve, the driver loses control. He T-bones the van, plowing it sideways into the big rig. The semi starts to jackknife. 
and then slams into the medium. A streetlight is hit as well, sending it crashing on top of the wreckage. Dispatch, we check his first survivors. Officers move in to apprehend the suspect and check on his victim. Amazingly, no one was killed. Although their vehicles took a beating, for cops, no pursuit is predictable. They know too well that whenever someone runs from the law, disasters like this are always just down the road. Next, on World's Wildest Police Video, a bad luck thief steals a car from a cop. And his luck goes from bad worse. When a person steals, you can assume they have no respect for the law. But when the thief steals from a cop, they've crossed the line between criminal and just plain stupid. Camden County, Georgia. A deputy pulls over a car from his hot list. 1133, 1129. But this vintage Lincoln isn't your average stolen vehicle. It's been stolen from a deputy sheriff in Florida. And the thief is willing to use every one of the engine's 200 horses to avoid giving it back. 40 days, he's running. The suspect must have a death wish. Taking off on him. Racing the wrong way up a highway off ramp. He's on the the lane. In a car he stole from a cop. Head four, southbound, northbound lane, exit four. Median right now. The deputy dodges opposing traffic and barrels across the median to stay in pursuit. A rookie female officer joins the chase. I was scared. That was my first chase. The suspect whips a high-speed U-turn across the uneven dirt, demolishing the car's suspension. We're going back. Get outside. I see we're back. The pursuit moves to surface streets recklessly sliding around curves. The suspect's hands off the spur. When the car thief nearly runs off the road, the cruisers box him in. <laughs> but the driver will not quit. Hold him in, hold him in. Using all the torque in the Lincoln's big block engine to try and ram himself loose, he even attempts to run down Deputy Dixon. By looking at him in his eyes, he, he didn't care, he was not scared. The officers have no choice but to open fire on the tires even though they know the car belongs to a brother officer. Got the tires on this side. You better get out. We got all the tires. Amazingly, the man is able to pull away. But he doesn't get far on four flats. He abandons the useless car. Suspect is on foot. Can clear suspects on foot. We got other guys. Deputies find the fleeing man nearby. I went up in custody call for one. But he's not ready to go quietly. Stealing and destroying a cop's car is stupid enough, but this guy is downright suicidal. The deputies oblige, but not the way he expects. Stay down. Stay down. One taste of mace is enough to turn this dangerous man's tough talk into whimpers and wheezes. Get down on us, push it in. Fans out, all the way out. These cops are mad. Shut up. They don't like perps who steal their vehicles. Taking off on me. And they definitely don't like having to explain to a fellow officer on this side. why they had to shoot up his favorite car. But these deputies are pros. They didn't get personal. Instead, they got their man. I'm an honest guy with a you tell me, sir. All in all, it was a wild ride for a cop on her first pursuit. After the pursuit was over with, I thought, this is what police work is. Stop it. No, come here. When the ordinary becomes the extraordinary, when order turns to chaos, when seconds and inches separate life from death, I felt the fault again, it was gone. Shoot me!
These are the times cops put it all on the line. 